Okay, this lab involves the studying jet impact, that is the force caused by a change in momentum of a fluid hitting a surface, external flow. Um, the apparatus here uh, coming from tech equipment, we've got the, the nozzle, water is going to come out of a nozzle and hit a vein. We can see a flat vein in there. Second part of the experiment, we'll, we'll replace it with a cone-shaped vein. When the water starts up and comes out the nozzle, it's going to be headed, it'll hit the vein or plate up here. We need to slide the jockey weight out then to balance the force. Record this distance, how far did we move the jockey weight. We also need to measure the water flow rate. And we do that by going back to this bucket test, which we haven't done for a while. Um, that's done back here. When the pump is on, we need to, to um, start the watch. When the, as the beam comes up, as soon as it hits, we'll put some weights on. Maybe this time I'll add four kilograms of steel. It's two kilograms, add two more kilograms. And then as this comes back up and strikes the stop, we start, stop the stopwatch. So we get four kilograms of steel in so many seconds and we recall with the three to one lever in here that would actually be three times that four kilograms or 12 kilograms of water in so many seconds. That gives us a volume flow rate. From that we can take some data here. There's a nozzle diameter. If we know the mass flow rate, the nozzle diameter, and the um, temperature of the water to get the density, we can determine the velocity that we need. And then we can ultimately plug that into the momentum equation and, and see what, in theory, we should get for a force. Well, let me try turning it on. One of the things that should be done at first would be to make sure this is level, or reasonably so. And then, actually, this ought to be a the, the, um, the starting position, we put the jockey weight so that the notch in the jockey weight is at the zero position and then use this screw up here to adjust until we get the beam horizontal. And I want to make sure that's tight. And we should probably, uh, typically we set this bob here so that the bob, if you notice the notches in the bob, I'll try to get in close here, there's two notches on it. Uh, one notch should line up on top of the plate, one should line up on the bottom of the plate. Um, you can see it down here, that'll tell us that we're horizontal. We should probably adjust those a little bit, although it doesn't look too bad right now, but we need to adjust the length of that string a little bit so that works out. So this is our starting position. We're going to turn on the pump here. And we're going to get a blast of water, maybe. There it comes. A bit I'm going to open the valve up. And we let her rip here. Open the valve wide open to start with, and then we slide the jockey weight out until we're back to the new starting position or neutral position. Interesting observation, although it's difficult to see in the movie, is that the water is coming out horizontally in a sheet, which means it's changed from um, going straight up to going perfectly horizontal or a 90 degree change. We also want to notice on that scale that there's, it goes zero to a hundred, then there's another hundred out there. So the scale just goes uh, basically, uh, anyway, we got to reinterpret this. This is about 110 millimeters. Um, we also want to get the flow rate. So I'll take the weights off. Kind of hard to show this in the camera and get the weights off. And then I guess we need to actually need to put them, put several of them on here, enough on to get the Ah, never mind. I'm rusty. Slide this over to bring it first. Like Slide it over to drain until it becomes almost weightless. Just 
still feels kind of heavy, but maybe that's all the lighter it's going to get. One thing we do not do is turn the pump off. We let the pump run all the time. And I think that's, there we go, it's about weightless. So I'll put this weight on. This weight doesn't count. Slide the stop over. Get the stopwatch ready. And start the stopwatch. And then I'm going to add two kilograms. I'm going to add maybe four kilograms of steel weights. And when it comes up to level again, to balance out the four kilograms of steel, it's going to take three times that or 12. So stop the stopwatch. So four kilograms of steel translates to 12 kilograms of water. In that many seconds, that'll give me the mass flow rate. And then with the help of density and diameter, we can convert that to the velocity and we can figure out the momentum and figure out what should happen. Well, the next thing to do then is to slow this down. If we start out for the second trial, maybe we want to do, um, we'll bring it down to say about 75. I can adjust the jockey weight, then I can adjust the valve down here. I can turn the valve in and bring it down to horizontal. And that takes a little bit of fooling around, but, and then now I've got the second jockey position. I've got 73 millimeters. And I'm going to go do this weight of the mass flow rate test again. So we take the weights off, slide the stop over to the right, slide that stop over to the right. So now the, the lever's all the way up, the tank is draining. Let it drain till it feels weightless. Still doesn't, still not there. Still feels pretty heavy in there, starting to lighten up though. Once it feels pretty light, uh, there you go. Now it feels like the tank's about empty. So we'll put one weight on to bring the beam down, slide the stop over, get the watch ready. And as soon as it comes up, we click start the stopwatch. I think I'll put uh, maybe four kilograms of steel on again. And we'll stop the stopwatch when the beam comes up level. And again with that multiplier of three, I added four kilograms of steel, so there's 12 kilograms of water in so many seconds. Click, that's what the stopwatch just gives me right there. So that's how we collect the data. Um, we'll stop this and then to change the beam, it's a little bit of a trick, but just uh, <laughs> what we got to do is get this in to replace that one. There's a little screw up here and it can be done um, pretty easily. Somebody would hold the camera. <laughs> um, it just turns. And just be sure not to drop it. Screw here, maybe that's the way to do it. Right. And just replace the other vein here and put it back where it was. Did not drop anything. That's yeah, probably easier to do that. That goes in a little hole there. Get the machine back. some adjustment here to get it back level again. Um, 
But ideally this is set up so that this thing has one notch at the top of the blue plate, one notch at the bottom of the blue plate, about like that. I need to adjust the spring. But I guess that's it. Okay. I guess everything's on there. The only thing is... Oh, I'm... Yeah, right there. That.